As you just saw, shipbuilding in Starfield can drive you mad at times. That's why in this step-by-step -step walkthrough, we're going to help you build the only ship you'll ever need. It can handle all endgame activities, be it exploration, combat, or smuggling. Please note that this guide assumes you already know the basics of Starfield shipbuilding, such as rotating different parts, adjusting height during construction, selecting all connected parts, and the like. In my opinion, there are five primary goals that a ship needs to meet to earn the title of a jack of all trades. To begin with, it must have a huge jump range. Next, it needs to have a cargo hold large enough to store all your gear and resources. But the question is, how big is big enough? I'm sure everyone has a valid reason for one number or the other, but after some thought, I settled on something around 5,000 capacity before buffs, which provides over 7,000 available capacity with maximum payload skill. Third, the ship must include every possible utility feature. This includes all three workbenches, a pharmaceutical and research lab, a cooking station, and an armory to store your gear and weapons. Next, a strong offensive capability is vital to tackle any combat challenge in space, even on a very hard difficulty setting. And finally, it must have a nice mobility. Some secondary goals include having a simple yet effective interior design. From a logistics standpoint, the ship must be easy to navigate, which is why it features two floors with no ladders. There should also be no unnecessary hallways to avoid those looping interiors. It would be cool if the ship had the capability for smuggling, providing those who engage in illegal activities with additional opportunities to make money. Next, it needs to have more crew on board so that it isn't lonely up there. I'm gonna make you mine tonight. While I originally designed this ship to support a maximum crew of eight, I decided to scale it back and adjust it for a two-man setup instead. It can, however, be easily expanded to accommodate up to eight people. How to do that and the reasons for choosing the two-crew version will be covered in a separate section of this video. And lastly, the ship should also look good from the outside, although I must admit I'm not fully satisfied with its current appearance. Now, it's worth mentioning two important downsides to this setup. The biggest one is the cost. With a 20% discount from the commerce skill, building this ship costs around 650k credits. Without the perk, it's even steeper, requiring over 800k credits. Another disadvantage is that the lack of ladders necessitates a specific setup, resulting in a very low profile and a back entrance. As a result, when we're outside, we have to go all the way to the back to enter the cockpit. I'm personally fine with it because of all the fast travel options available to us, but it can be inconvenient at times. Nonetheless, after several hours of testing, I was very pleased with this setup, and this ship became my favorite and only one that I use. So if you're comfortable with the high build price and the back entrance, stick around for a step-by-step -step walkthrough on how to create it and further adapt it to your needs. But before we dive into the building process, let's take a quick tour of the interior so you can decide if this is the right choice for you. If you'd like to skip ahead to the building section of the video, use the chapters to jump to that part. Upon entering the ship, we find ourselves in the armory. I chose the Nova Armory for its symmetrical layout and ease of access. It can accommodate a large number of weapons and ammunition, and is the only armory equipped with mannequins for storing your favorite spacesuits. Continuing from the armory, we arrive at the bottom junction. To the left, you'll find the science lab, while to the right, after passing through a short hallway, we reach the Nova Workshop. The only reason I chose Nova over other manufacturers was because of how nice it looked, but you can choose your favorite here. Inside the workshop, you'll find all three workbenches, and in the back, there's a bottom place docker that fits perfectly in the rear room. Returning to the bottom junction, as I mentioned earlier, you'll find the Tayo Science Lab on the left, equipped with pharmaceutical and research labs. Again, you can select any manufacturer you want here, it doesn't have to be Tayo. To conclude the tour of the bottom floor, let's proceed straight ahead from the armory through the hallway toward the bridge. I usually take the left stairs for an easy route to the cargo hold controls on the upper level. For the bridge, I opted for the Nova Cabot C3, but you can certainly choose the C3X or even the C4 Cabot versions if you prefer. The only difference is a minimal increase in cargo capacity and mass with those variants. Note that for a two-floor setup without ladders, you must select one of these three bridges, as only Nova provides two entrances at different levels. The top floor features crew quarters on the left and captain's quarters on the right. The captain's quarters are from Tayo and include a navigation console, which isn't necessary to be honest, but I wanted to include it for role-playing purposes. Finally, on the left side of the top floor, we enter the Stroud all-in-one berth. 
The notable feature here is the cooking section on the right, fulfilling our requirement of having every utility feature on board. Other than cooking, there is not much going on here in terms of additional features. The crew will sometimes hang out here when off duty, so this habitat module has a nice role-playing flavor. After the tour, let's move on to buying everything we need to assemble the ship. The full list of parts will also be available in the description below in case you prefer to create a shopping list that way. Personally, I prefer to buy everything first and then connect the parts, but you can also choose to buy and assemble everything piece by piece as you watch the video. It's entirely up to you. However, before you embark on a buying spree, it's incredibly important to save the game just in case you make a mistake along the way and need to roll back. Also, double check if you have the necessary credits, depending on your current commerce skill rank. Now for the majority of this walkthrough, we are going to use the large ship landing pad found at our outpost. The reason is that it comes with an integrated ship builder that has access to every ship part we're going to need later. If you don't have an outpost with a large landing pad yet, consider building one, at least for the purpose of this tutorial. Before we go to our outpost though, we need to obtain four unique parts that can only be bought from the manufacturers themselves. The most important one is the bridge, and for that, we're going to travel to New Homestead on Titan, the moon of Saturn in the Sol system. Now you need to choose the ship you want to edit and attach these unique parts to it, allowing us to access them later at our outpost. Personally, I chose the Frontier, as it was finally time to give this baby a nice, well-deserved overhaul. Just keep in mind that you are not required to use the ship you are editing. You can continue to fly around the systems in your current ship. Alright, first remove the default cockpit or bridge, depending on your chosen ship, and under the cockpit section choose the Cabot C3 bridge and attach it to the front. Save your modifications and leave. Next, travel to Hopetown on Polvo, found in the Valo system. Under Habs, purchase one Hopetech Hab spine and two cross braces. Arrange them as shown on the screen, and then fast travel back to your outpost where we'll add everything else. Don't forget to apply modifications to your ship before leaving the place. At your outpost, under Habs, buy the Tayo Companionway 1x1 Top B, Tayo Captain's Quarters 2x1 Mid, Tayo Science Lab 2x1 Mid, Stroud All-in-One Berth 3x1, Nova Galactic Armory 2x1, and Nova Galactic Workshop 2x1. Purchase the Shipbed 200 Landing Bay and flip it so the entrance is at the back. Now that we have all the interior parts, let's assemble them in the right order. Place the small companionway in the middle and attach the captain's quarters on the left and the all-in-one berth on the right, so everything lines up as shown here. That is the top floor completed. For the bottom floor, position the landing bay in the middle and attach the armory to the front. Add the hab spine to the front of the armory and connect cross braces to each side of the armory like this. Next, place the science lab on the left and the workshop on the right, so the bottom floor has this nice symmetrical shape. Now select the top floor and move it above the bottom floor so the frontal sections line up like this. The last thing left to complete the interior is to connect the bridge to the front, leaving us with this oddly asymmetrical form. Don't worry, it will all make sense as we add more parts later. Under dockers, buy the 100 DP Slim docker and flip it so it is ready to be installed on the bottom of the ship. The weapons of choice will be all particle beams, two auto beams and one auto turret to be specific. For this setup, we'll purchase six Vanguard Obliterator Auto Projectors, which are unlocked by completing the UC quest line. In case you haven't done this amazing quest line yet, we have a dedicated chapter for weapon alternatives. Next, buy four PBO-175 Auto Helion Beams and four PBO-300 Auto Alpha Turrets. Rotate the turrets so they all face forward. For engines, fuel, and grav drive, buy two Amun Dun X300 engines, two Supernova 2200 engines, one M10 and two M50 Ulysses Helium 3 tanks, and a J52 Gamma grav drive. We really have only one option for defense, which is the Assurance SG1800 shield generator. To power everything up, buy the SF40 sheared flow reactor. Now buy the following landing gears, six Aculander 11s, two Hope 5s, and two Hope 6s. For cargo, we're going to need two 100 cm ballast shielded cargo holds, two Caravel V103, two Galleon S204, two Caravel V101 shielded cargo holds, and one 10 ST hauler shielded cargo hold. The only things left to buy are the structural parts. Since there are many of them, I'm going to leave a shopping list on the screen so you can pause the video while purchasing the parts in the game.
Be sure to spread the parts along the grid and take a mental note of where everything is, as the assembly process will be quick and simple this way. It's time to connect all the pieces. To make things cleaner, let's begin by constructing a few larger components that will later simply snap into place. We'll start with a simple back piece. For this, we'll need a 10 ST hauler shielded cargo hold, two turrets, and a Deimos tail. Select the cargo hold and flip it so that the slant faces backward. Place the tail on top and install a turret on each side, ensuring that the turrets are facing forward if you haven't rotated them yet. The back piece is now complete, so you can set it aside for the moment. Next, let's move a few large parts out of the way. Take two Galleon S204 cargo holds and two Acculanders. Now, rotate the right landing gear like this, so we can place them on each side of the ship later. Put cargo holds on top and move these aside. Keep in mind which one is the left and which one is the right. Now it's time to put together two large engine assemblies. For the left engine, you'll need Hope 5 landing gear, a bumper, supernova engine, engine mount, cowling, and a large Hope Tech radiator. Drag them all to a free spot in the editor and connect them in the following order. Place the engine mount over the landing gear and connect the engine to the mount, ensuring that the mount connects to the lower half of the engine, as shown. Attach the radiator to the engine and the cowling to the radiator, making sure to flip the cowling if necessary so that it faces the way you see here. The last part for this component is the bumper, which you need to flip so it faces as shown. Now do the same for the right engine, but rotate the cowling and bumper in the opposite direction. Once done, move both pieces out of the way. For the front weapons, you'll need the Acculander, a smaller Nova Cowling, Deimos Wing E, a small Horizon weapon mount, one turret, and two Vanguard Obliterators. Flip the lander twice so that the connecting point is on the left. Snap the Deimos Wing to that point and mount the turret on its side. Next, flip the weapon mount and snap it to the front of the cowling as shown. Attach both obliterators to the mount, select all attached parts, and connect everything to the front of the landing gear. The left side is now complete, and you should repeat the same process for the right side. Make sure to rotate a few parts so that they mirror the one you just made. After you finish, move everything to the side. Next up is the top weapon assembly. For this, go ahead and drag the Stroud cowling to an empty spot, ensuring that a single side connection point is on the left. Bring the Nova weapon mount, a 100cm ballast shielded cargo, Deimos spine D, and two PBO-175 auto helium beams near the cowling. Connect the weapon mount to the front of the cowling and attach both beams to the inner portion of the weapon mount. Snap the shielded cargo on the back, and on top of it put the Deimos spine, making sure it's oriented as shown. Flip if necessary. Repeat the same process again, and once more pay attention to the cowling orientation. The single side connection point should now be on the right. When done, move both pieces to the side. Finally, we can complete this preparation by assembling two small wings found on the sides. Take the flat Nova radiator, Nova wing, and a Vanguard obliterator. Attach the Nova wing to the left side of the radiator and snap the weapon on the left side of the wing. Repeat the process for the right side by flipping the Nova wing. Now we're done with the most challenging part. All that's left is for you to make some room to snap every component into its place. Continuing our build, grab one Acculander and the front left weapon piece we just assembled and place them near the front of the ship. Double check if the landing gear is rotated as shown here and snap it just under the top hab. Ignore the red warning indicators for now. Now attach the front left weapons component to the front of the bottom left habitat module, like this. 
Do the same for the right side, paying attention once again to the orientation of the landing gear. You may need to flip it twice so that the connection point is facing the inner side of the ship. Snap it under the top floor and connect the front right weapons in front of the bottom right hab. Take those two large cargo modules with landing gear and place each one on the side of the landing bay in a way that the connecting point is the landing gear, not the cargo hold. That ugly space on the left side is now ideal for our reactor, so insert it there. If you've done everything right so far, it should align perfectly with the top and bottom of the ship. To mask it even further, select the entire left side of our top weapon assembly and place it over the reactor on the left side of the ship. Now this is very important. Do not push everything too far to the front. This is too much, and this is perfect. When you're done with the left side, place the right side too while also paying attention to the placement. Next are two large engine assemblies. Take the left piece and make sure it is placed on the left side of the ship with the cowling connecting to the top of the ship. Do the same on the right side. It's time to fill this gap in the middle. Place the Deimos cowling between the two large weapon mounts on top first. Next, take these medium cargo holds and place them in the front so they fit at the bottom like this. Make sure to rotate them so they can fit to each side. Take two Deimos wing C parts and rotate them so the radiator fins are facing each other. Attach each one to the sides above the cargo holds you just installed to form a protective barrier of sorts. Now slap the shield on top of the grav drive and place everything behind medium cargo holds. Next, attach these small cargo boxes to the top connection points above the landing bay on each side. And to finish the middle section, install the first component we assembled to the back, like this. While we're here, add the two remaining engines to large cargo holds on the back. Be careful not to attach engines to the landing gears below them to avoid height errors. We're almost done here, so let's wrap it up. Snap both Hope 6 landing gears to the back of the bottom halves, one on the left and the other one on the right side. Do the same for the wings and place them so they come just before the big engine components we installed earlier, like this. Now grab these small Nova radiators and align them in a row on top of the halves on each side. Note that there is a very tiny gap below the wings that enables the radiator on the back to just barely fit. Attach two large fuel tanks and two remaining bumpers to each side of the ship just above the radiators. Connect these two small Nova thruster arrays on the side of the bottom halves on the outer side. Alternatively, you may choose to install windows instead. It's your call. The only thing left to do now is to put two remaining parts on the bottom. Grab the fuel tank and squeeze it under the ship in this small space on the right side between the armory and workshop. Finally, drag the docker and attach it to the back of the workshop. Not the front, the back. That way we can have a nice and clear hallway inside without any obstructions. To wrap up, make sure to set up weapon groups. I organized mine by placing two manual weapons in the first two groups and keeping auto turrets in the third group. This way you won't need to worry about using the third button or key during combat. While you're at the weapon screen, make sure to give your ship a proper name. I can't look at this bridge without thinking about this particular type of fish, so naming the ship the same way seemed the only appropriate choice. For the colors, I went for a combination of two shades of gray and a gold color as a third option. I tried to match most of the installed weapons and give the ship a modern military look. So now that you've completed your ship, consider adding optional yet incredibly powerful equipment for further enhancements. The comm spike, conduction grid, and scan jammer can help you lock onto targets more quickly, boost shield regeneration, and make it easier to sneak illegal goods through planetary scans. 
Unfortunately, access to all three items requires a visit to the key space station in the Crick system, which is controlled by the Crimson Fleet Pirate Faction. The only exception is the Scan Jammer, which can also be found at the Red Mile on the Porima 3 planet. I mentioned at the beginning of the video that this ship was originally designed for a crew of eight. During my time using it, the experience of flying alongside other NPCs felt incredibly immersive. Every crew member was actively engaged, whether in their assigned tasks or simply relaxing in their quarters during their free time. However, over time I began to notice some strange behaviors among the crew. Within the dimly lit habitation chambers, the crew gathered in secret, talking quietly. Their conversations would cease the moment I set foot in the room, replaced by insincere smiles that did little to mask their true intentions. In the days that followed, the situation took a turn for the worse. They adopted a passive-aggressive stance, deliberately obstructing the ship's passageways, making it increasingly challenging for me to navigate the vessel. To be frank, this behavior started to annoy me, leading to several agonizing days of wrestling with ominous thoughts and refusing to let them consume me. After a few seemingly ordinary days, a disconcerting sight awaited me in the armory. Everyone was here. However, upon my approach, they swiftly disbanded, displaying complete indifference to my presence. It was then that I realized this could only mean one thing, a mutiny. Fortunately, I had taken the precaution of removing all weapons days prior. Yet, with the safety of the ship and my own life hanging in the balance, I resolved to purge the disloyal crew and retain only three trusted members. But if you're not worried about the integrity of your team, here's how to prepare your ship to accommodate the maximum number of crew members. First, remove these four elements from the top left and top right and delete the captain's quarters and the all-in-one berth. Note that removing the captain's quarters also eliminates the navigation console, but since we have no real use for it, you should proceed safely. Next, add a small compartment such as a storeroom and place it on the side where the large 3x1 hab was located, like this. Now add two control stations of your choice to both sides of the ship, ensuring that one of them is from Nova Galactic because it has an integrated cooking station, which we lost by removing the berth. Move these tops back to their original positions and you're done. Your ship can now support the maximum number of crew members. All that's left is to assign them to your ship. Good luck, you're going to need it. Let's take a look at some different weapon setups now. In case you don't have access to Vanguard Obliterators, you could visit Hope Tech and purchase three Exterminator 95 MEV Auto Helion Beams. These make excellent alternatives, but remember that you can mount only three of them due to their power rating of four. There's a suitable location in the middle of the ship for one if you replace the Deimos cowling with a Hope Tech Cap A, and you can place the remaining two on the sides of the wings, just to give you an example. If you're focused on boarding enemy ships, you may want to consider replacing the turrets with EM weapons to make disabling engines or other modules easier and safer. Four Nullifier 1750 suppressors are the best available option, and they are readily accessible at your outpost too. While particle beams can certainly be used for this purpose, they are simply too powerful and often damage more than just the targeted components of the ship. Another extremely viable setup involves using all manual weapons. For this, remove the four turrets and replace them with three exterminators, resulting in three high DPS manual particle weapons. Alternatively, you can opt for the lazy setup by exclusively mounting turret weapons on your ship. For hands-free combat, you need three Obliterator 250 MEV Alphas, four PBO 300 Auto Alpha turrets, and four PBO 100 Auto Neutron turrets. To maximize DPS, consider investing in the Particle Beam Weapon System skill. And if you're going for a full turret setup, Automated Weapon System skill is a must. If you want to increase your crew size, you'll need to invest heavily in the Social Tree in order to rank up your Ship Command skill. 
This end game build becomes available as soon as you reach rank 4 in piloting and starship design skills. However, there are level requirements to unlock certain parts. By level 60, you should have everything unlocked, but if you manage to build this ship before reaching level 60, please share your experience in the comments. If you can't find a specific part on the vendor's list, it's likely because you haven't reached a high enough level. I can't wait for proper mod support to arrive to see how shipbuilding and customization in Starfield will evolve in the hands of passionate players. But with the options we have right now, I believe this is a well-rounded endgame ship. If you have any ideas on how to further improve this build, or if you have any tips or suggestions, please feel free to share them in the comments below. In case you found the video useful, smash that like button and share it with others. Click subscribe and also turn on the bell notification so you don't miss our next video. Until then, have a great day and a ton of fun.